All right, so the air condition may be on and you might hear a little bit of background noise, but guys, I am sweating. I, I just cannot take this Mumbai heat anymore. So I'm about to pop in two weeks, 14 days to go. This baby's like cooking fully. It's not coming anytime before. I feel like it's chilling. There's no signs of labor, nothing. I think I'm gonna make it to 40 weeks. And then we have a big baby. I really feel it's a big baby dude. Hey guys, <laughs> I forgot to even say hi to you guys. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a fun Q&A, probably. I keep saying this is gonna be my last video before baby, but I don't know, whenever I feel like I need to film, I film. Okay, so I've technically have stopped working. I've slowed down my paid partnerships and things like that because it's getting a lot for me to sit and edit and you know, there's so much construction happening outside my house. It's like forever until I'm in India, in Mumbai, construction jari rahega. All right guys, so I'm gonna be answering some questions and doing my makeup, which is my favorite thing to do. So I'm gonna pick up like random questions. There's so many. There are a lot of personal questions, which I'm gonna sidetrack for a bit because it's something I don't wanna dive into right now. I wanna have like fun questions and something that'll interest you. And hopefully you can learn something. Let's see, let's see. First question, how will you sum up your pregnancy? Good question to begin with. I think it's not a very positive answer, but I really want to be honest with you and I don't want to fake it. You know, I never will. So overall, it's been a very difficult journey because of course, you know, uh, I'm going through a separation as well with my partner. So it's not been the most ideal pregnancy journey like everyone else's. Like I really, really thought it's gonna be swell and like pretty and I'm gonna love my bump, I'm gonna be so happy. Unfortunately, I had a, it was a very difficult time for me the past nine months. So I haven't had the chance to fully, fully be happy. I can't point out a moment where I was genuinely in bliss and happy, unfortunately. So it's not, it was not one of my favorite years um, since last September to now, it's not been great. I have been battling a lot of mental health issues a lot of anger a lot of sadness it's like a breakup like anyone going through like a breakup and especially like a marriage ending of 13 years i mean 13 years of being in a relationship two years of married with someone so it's like a lot to take in and just a lot happened even towards the end with my health a lot of loneliness a lot of like self-doubt a lot of questioning of life choices it was not the most, like I couldn't focus on my baby. I couldn't dream about my baby. I would literally have like nightmares. I would wake up because I was lonely. And so yeah, not good <laughs> to be honest. Okay. My personal journey, but that's subjective, right? Everyone, it doesn't have to be the same for you. It can be amazing for you, but I don't know if I want to go through this again, to be very honest with you, because this has left a very bitter taste in my mouth. And I don't know, it is what it is. I just want to move past this and now be happy i want to find like a happy moment in my life because it's been a while since i was genuinely happy look at this cute thing it's a spotlight primer by pack so happy for you my question is what kind of a mom do you envision yourself being oh it smells nice wow i like wow i like primer oils a lot you know that no one can really plan right on being like what kind of a mom look i have a subtle like idea of what kind of a parenting I want to give my kid because um, everyone has obviously gone through their own fair share of I wish my mom and dad had done this you know all of us have that like I wish my mom and dad had split earlier I wish my mom and dad had paid attention to me earlier I wish my parents hugged me more often so I feel like a lot of us are coming from that school of thought and I also have a few of those where I wish certain certain things so I think those are the things I want to give my kid uh, because I know how that feels and I think overall I'm just gonna be a really fun mom I think I want my kid to be able to tell me anything and everything under the sun I know all parents wish that but I think um, you need to give them space and I don't think I'm gonna be the kind to like get really super angry I'm just not an angry person but I'm a very like okay tell me what's up let's sort this out you know I want to be very solution oriented as a mother this is all in my head right now. I don't know how I'm going to react, but I definitely will be more accommodating. I know so much more. Like, we know so much more than our mothers and fathers back in the day. So I feel like with the knowledge given, the, the amazing information and parenting and podcasts I've listened to, 
I just feel like I can open doors for my child and actually break a lot of generational trauma and just bad generational cycles that have been coming through and through and through i think i can walk towards like tearing all those down i'm going to be very open in talking about a lot of taboo topics at home very open to talking about mental health from a very young age body parts consent respect obedience also speaking up for yourself standing up for yourself like i'm very very a principles girl you know i'm very like you need to have a set of values that are going that's going to take you far in life i had to learn a lot of values myself and yeah i feel like that's the kind of parent i want to be i want to be able to travel with my child i want my kid not to be like embarrassed of me which look they will be okay everyone was at certain age so i'm not saying like that's going to happen every kid's going to like run away from you but that's my aim you know i want to be their friend i want to be their friend and i want to be able to like chill with them and hang out with them and just that's my like vision have fun with my baby this is the l'oreal glow mon amour illuminator highlighting drops maybe this is supposed to go like on top of foundation but i like it underneath because it's very subtle then i'm going to do the color bar perfect match primer that's a hell of a skin prep you said you wanted to address some rumors post the podcast Will you do them now? Okay, so I recently was on a podcast with Shivani Pao. I'm sure a lot of you know it went viral. I think a lot of people who don't know my journey and who don't know me suspected the whole thing was a sham, and they're like, "Well, through her stories, it doesn't look like she lives in a one bedroom." I'm like, "This was like years ago. This was like nine years ago, guys." And some are like, "The math is not adding up," and da 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 da, like Einstein's, and I'm like, "Girl, yeah, I might be a year or two here and there." but um it's all true whatever i said you guys know i don't care about lying dude i really don't have the energy to lie about my life and fake it and it was like a very roller coaster life you know my mom and dad were like super super poor then it went up a little bit so we were better off and then we were really wealthy we came into a lot of money and then we were completely broke and then now we're here so it's been like a journey for us and everything i said on that podcast was absolutely true okay the one bedroom and everything and when i say like we moved into the one bedroom i don't mean it as an insult like having a one bedroom is a bad thing i just felt like falling from like that much wealth from a four bedroom luxurious lifestyle to like a one bedroom was difficult for us to adjust like if you come from so much wealth as you grow up as a teenager if you've not been through it you'll not you won't be able to empathize with me but you can try to sympathize with me because dropping immediately without any explanation of why you dropped and you're here today is difficult to comprehend as a teenager as a 21 22 year old you don't understand where to begin earning the money to pay rent why this happened to you you start questioning everything right and that's where we were so none of that was a lie i would never lie yeah i just wanted to address that <laughs> There are a lot of rumors if I sit and address it and like justify it forget it too many assumptions that I can't even like wrap my head around but my OGs know what I mean they've seen my life and that's all I care and this skin is doing something to me I cannot stop looking at my face I'm moving to the Dior foundation this is in the shade 3N How often do you talk to your baby and are you opting for a C section even this was like very common in the q and a everyone was like are you planning a c section are you planning a natural delivery let me let me throw some light on that for a bit i genuinely want to give birth before i talk about my birth plan you know because you never know how it's going to go you want your birth to be a certain way and you just get into a c section you know so it's kind of difficult to address it but i can tell you like roughly what it's about unfortunately i don't talk to my baby i am okay saying that because guys that's the last thing on my mind you have no idea what is going through my head like i am actually i have only been able to process the end of my relationship and like i haven't had time to think about my baby as much as you think you know those times where you just given like just relaxed you're taken for a holiday you're like courted you're you know those kind of things i really thought that would happen to me and it didn't and i had to like really really think about my life you know this was not the life i envisioned for myself i did not plan on being a single mom so yeah all of that you know so i don't actually talk to my baby it's it's very odd to me i i only belly rub 
I belly rub, I think about my baby, I'm just like, we're gonna be okay. I remember talking to baby in the shower during my first trimester and second trimester. Huda Beauty and L'Oreal concealers. So for my new moms, I highly recommend you not being afraid to do a little bit of research. Actually do a lot of research. I think usually people have a specific date in mind that they want their kid to be born, etc. I'm not like that. I don't plan on getting like cut. That's something I want to avoid as much as I can. But if it happens, it happens. You know what I mean? But that's not my plan. My plan is to do a water birth and is to birth naturally with pain meds or without pain meds. I'm pretty sure I'm leaning towards with pain meds. What type of lingerie do you wear in this time of post-pregnancy? I am not post-pregnancy. For lingerie, um, you want to sort of wear mesh panties for a while. The hospital grade mesh panties, you get those on Amazon. And because if you had a C-section, you can't wear cotton panties, guys. It really, really hurts. Even during natural birth, you want to wear sort, sort of like light mesh panties with a pad because you're going to bleed a lot. So that's the panty situation. For bras, you want to wear nursing bras. Bras that are easily like you can pull down, bras that you can unbutton and unclasp. You don't want to wear padded, wired bras, okay? So you get a ton of nursing bras on H&M and Zivami and like it's endless. You get a lot of them in the market these days. So. Is it painful when the baby kicks? No, not at all. Not at all. It starts with butterfly kicks, like little, little kicks um, in your early second trimester. A little later, depends. And then when you're in your eighth month and ninth month, depends on what kind of a baby you have. My baby is uh, a kicker, okay, and a puncher. So it's like already pissed off with the world. <laughs> it's, girl, when I tell you kicks, it's like, and I'm just like, what did I ever do? Why? I'm sitting down. <laughs> they don't hurt. They're just like, like nudging you, nudging you. You'll see your stomach roll up like that. Did you have any early symptoms of pregnancy before missing a period? If so, please share. I know this can get very confusing. Like if you're in a relationship and you're just like messing around, don't, don't mess around. Look, there are many factors of a missing period, okay? Hormonal, health issues, stress, la la la. It's a lot, you're date changing. So it's not Pregnancy is the first thing we girls always run to, but it's very difficult getting pregnant. It's not very easy to get pregnant, okay? Yeah, so the first thing I can clearly tell you now that I think about it is, yes, a missing period. If you miss your period for like four or five days, then it's a concern. But two, three days is absolutely normal. Just take a pregnancy test. But what I realized is my boobs got really heavy, my boobies, okay? And usually I used to get very heavy sore boobs pre-period all the time so it was nothing new like the symptoms are not new it's like it's I'm probably getting my period it's literally like that okay but I really the boobs were so heavy than usual they started to hurt that is a sign and constant peeing I remember peeing around the clock like more than usual and I usually pee a lot so I was like I pee a lot this is not different but I, I used to pee come back I used to get up and pee again and I'm like something is off Something is not right. I'm feeling very different. I'm, and then you feel a little tired, a little nausea. You don't want to like hang out with people. You're very antisocial. You'll feel it when you're pregnant. Yeah, the, those are the main signs I noticed. This is very heavy, but I'm going to take a second to answer this. Saying my boyfriend assaulted me once and is asking for a second chance. Is this acceptable? No. Hitting anyone is inexcusable. Like, they do, not, they do not deserve a second chance. I don't care if you were an alcoholic. I don't care if... There is no excuse for someone raising their hands on you. And that is something I firmly, firmly believe in. Doesn't matter whether it's parent kid. Doesn't matter if it's spouses. If your partner raises their hands on you, pushing, beating, slapping, hitting, it's over. Okay? And that cannot... Because once done, that means you could do it again. They come back saying, I'm sorry, I love you, I did it out of anger. Mm -mm -mm. You don't hit people you love. I'm sorry, you don't hit people you love. Even if you were intoxicated, even you don't hit people. You love. So I'm very, very against domestic violence. Any sort of beating, assaulting, not okay. It is not okay. And I cannot stress this enough, but I tell you that it's not okay. Nobody should raise their hands on you, period. Have you purchased a breast pump? And which one have you purchased? I didn't purchase a breast pump. I got it for my sister-in-law. So basically what happens is now that you get to uh, keep the machine. The machine stays the same. They're very expensive, but I got the Spectra 1, Spectra 2. 
plus two i think i'll put up a, an image here but it's one of the best uh, breast pumps you can find and it's kind of pricey but you know if you have any relative going to the us or states anywhere outside india you can get the spectra pump it's amazing that's what they say i haven't used it and you can change the wires and the flanges and all so you don't have to buy a new breast pump it's very expensive usually so you can just use if someone has to give it to you take the thing and just replace the wires and the flanges that's it and you're good to go um let's see how my breastfeeding journey goes that's also a whole vibe by the way i'm using one of my favorite drugs for eyeshadow palettes it's the nika one it's the eye color palette in two how are you dealing with stretch marks do you think stretch marks will completely go away let me tell you this you guys i did not have stretch marks till my eighth month okay the minute i touched the last week of my eighth month and hitting nine months girl like last week when i looked at my stomach i was taking some videos during the flash and i saw my stomach and i'm like what what just happened in two days i felt like overnight my stomach just like got all these stretch marks so i do have stretch marks it's not like i don't have and i'm telling you this baby is bare <laughs> like my body has never stretched so much obviously right you're growing a human you're growing an organ which is the placenta you have amniotic fluid there's tons of things happening in your body okay you're making space for your own organs and then you're making space for the baby and its organs so it's a lot of stretching so it is going to happen my love my stomach is quite big now uh, since i'm in the ninth month so towards the eighth ninth month you will feel a good stretch and now you can see like the red veins popping on the side my hips also have it around my belly button there's like a really like veins popping out like you know red color veins and honestly i was very like never had a scar on my body okay i grew up very very intentionally without being like you know a rough kid and i grew up with literal porcelain skin i'm not even kidding you my skin was like milk and now it was it was an adjustment i'm going to i'm not going to be like it's all good and stuff like that it's an adjustment i'm learning to love it So every day I wake up I just massage and look at myself in the mirror I take some body oil and I'm just like massaging myself massaging my scars I oiled so much I did everything I possibly could so don't forget to hydrate your skin it's the best you can possibly do and after that you just have to let it go stretch marks aayega okay and then will it go away yeah in a year's time they say the purpley reddish marks start to fade away and then it becomes just transparent white lines So you definitely will see it unless of course there are many treatments out there in the market now will help you avoid these it like sort of like reduce it reduce the visibility so give it a year's time yeah and don't rush into anything i'll probably look up some procedures um uh, of massaging my belly and if there's anything i can do to sort of you know get it to look nice and smooth but nothing else how are you supposed to expect you to grow a child and be scarless w- what expectation is this I feel like the Kardashians have just like ruined our expectations of having <laughs> they are like porcelain but who knows what's under that right who knows what's the reality what treatments they've been through what nobody knows girl it's all good you just have to literally accept it and I'm trying to accept it trust me I'm not there yet I'm like okay this is going to be my belly for a while it's going to go back I'm going to hit the gym I'm going to try my best to get my core in place I'm going to take pilates and then we'll see you know we'll see I'm going to wear this Hindash color fluid ultra shimmer in boy tears. People say if mom is happy during pregnancy, child also becomes joyful and not cranky. Is that true? I'm sorry, but I was miserable my entire pregnancy and I guarantee my child is going to be one of the happiest kids on this planet <laughs> because I am intentionally going to make that happen. Okay, and please stop putting pressure on mom to be happy during pregnancy. I I keep talking about it, but I really mean it when I say when someone is going through pregnancy let them go through pregnancy however they want to go you're not giving birth but they are and it's mentally excruciatingly painful because we're going through a body transition we're going through a mental transition the hormones are uncontrollable uncontrollable it is a very difficult journey and if you just tell moms chodo na khush to raho bacche ka kya hoga do not guilt trip mothers into feeling a certain way that is absolutely not fair and i think that's something i gave myself grace when i went through my separation and like la 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 i did not think about oh i need to be happy so that my baby will be happy let me suck up all the stress and like 
fake it and laugh. No, I was going through a very hard time during my pregnancy. Extremely hard. And I let myself cry for days. I let myself be angry. I let myself eat whatever I want to eat because I was very upset. I will, I don't regret that one bit. Absolutely not. Your kid is going to come out fine. They're going to be perfect. They have their mind of their own. They're going to be lovely as long as your environment is lovely and as long as mama continues to heal. This is something I will uh, point out for sure. Now, after baby comes, there's going to be a postpartum phase where you're going to get postpartum depression, postpartum blues. It's all about your hormones adjusting to the environment. It really depends on how much help you get, how your partner's supporting you, what kind of support team do you have around you. So all of that really matters. You can't go through this alone. It takes a village to raise a kid. And making sure that you are taken care of, you are fed, it feeds a lot into how you feel after. So usually when moms birth their babies, everybody comes to check on the baby. Nobody comes to check on the mama. Nobody asks like, are you okay? They'll just be like, how are you? How are you feeling? Isn't it the best feeling ever? Oh my God, he's so cute. He's so cute. She's so cute. What about the mom? She went through a massive, massive surgery. If it's a C-section, she's cut through like seven to nine layers of her skin. She stitched herself up. She's breastfeeding or she's bottle feeding and she's going through such a traumatic drop of hormones. And that's all you ask? Like, you gotta like take care of that mama. Okay, first it's how are you mama? Can I do anything for you? Can I bathe you? Can I get you cupcakes? Can I get you food? Do you want to sleep? Can I take the baby away for some time? I'll be sitting in the living room. What do you need? Okay, that is the first thing you need to ask when you get into any new mom's room or environment. Respect the mama's boundaries. Is it okay if I touch the baby? Wash your hands. Is it okay? You need to ask permission. Just because she had a baby and you're close to her doesn't give you the, the right to just, just like do whatever you want to do. Okay, just because she's fragile right now, she'll be tired. Okay, so I, I really think that this whole stigma of like, mama needs to happy so be happy so baby is happy. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay? Mama needs help to be happy. Mama needs constant uplifting. She needs validation. She needs to know she's done a fabulous job and she is right on track. And if she fails at breastfeeding, she's still a freaking stand-up mother. And she needs to be praised all in all. I feel like our parents didn't give a shit, dude. <laughs> our parents just like went through such difficult times when you know they were giving us both they went through their own personal hell they had to figure out their job they had to deal with their mother-in-laws they had to serve the entire joint family so much our parents went through right and look at us we're okay we're happy so please please don't put pressure on any mother to be happy when she's not genuinely happy are you scared or excited to be a mother have you planned this new beginning with your little one I'm not scared. I'm not nervous. I think it's one of the things I'm like least scared about. I think it's because I just, I know what it looks like. Like it's gonna be perpetually sleep deprivation, la la la. But I feel like, dude, I think I'm gonna embrace the good part so much more because I've been through so much shit, dude. I'm just like, I'm ready to be happy. <laughs> you know, when you're just like, F it, I want to be happy. I think when you go in from that mindset, you're gonna be good. And look, when it comes to like, technical stuff like like diaper changing and like breastfeeding and yes it's a small human being that has no idea how to survive without mama it is coming to the world and it's like what is this fresh hell like right when babies cry they just that's the only way they can communicate they don't know how else to communicate i know it's going to be a lot of crying it's going to be a lot of like figuring it out i don't know why they're crying i don't know what to do and you're like clueless you feel like a failure, you feel guilty. I know that's coming. Okay, I've prepared myself for that. I am just going to focus on like when baby takes its first steps, when baby looks into my eyes, when baby smiles, when baby's on my chest and when I'm feeding it. Those are the moments I'm going to count. Like those are the moments that I am so looking forward to. I cannot wait to have like one-on-one -on -one time baby and me. I'm not, I'm not scared if that's your question. Um, have you planned this new beginning with your little one? I don't know, guys. You can't plan this shit. Like I said, I plan my life. Look at what happened. You know, it's like you plan all this and then you're like, okay, then. <laughs> okay, I have these pixie blushes. I really want to try. How cute. They're so cute. They're the pixie on the glow blush tinted moisture sticks. 
Are you planning to take a break from social media? If so, for how long? Yeah, it's going to move my foundation. I don't want to do this. Hmm, cute. Yes, I am going to take a break for a while. I want to just be with baby. So that's why I'm, ha I'm doing all of this content beforehand. And uh, I will be putting stories here and there, guys. I think that's all good. You know, I think I'm, I can't do a lot without social media. But it's not like I'm going to pressurize myself into putting up anything nothing dude i'm gonna take it so easy on myself firstly everybody thinks i'm divorced i have to address that my parents just got divorced i am not divorced i'm going through a separation you guys okay have you gotten any fillers or plan on getting any during the future no fillers this is my real original scam and my original lift so far i am deathly afraid of needles you know that right the IV infusion was such a such an event for me that I had to plan so much mentally. I'm not opposed to it. I think when I'm like 45, 50, not right now for sure. I just, I'm probably like a, I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine myself voluntarily sitting to get needles in my face. Not at all. But uh, I'm not opposed to a little filler. I think it looks good. I think people get a really nice... Like, like this, see, like pull back a little bit of some units of Botox in the forehead and stuff. But no, I have no filler, nothing done to my face surgically. I'm deathly afraid of any surgical items. So do you plan on moving in with your mother after delivery? My mom lives with me, not the other way around. My actually my brothers and my mom live together, but she's partially moved out into my house. I live by myself, you guys. And yeah, it's just temporary though. Mama will move back, I think just to take care of the baby for a while i have a lot of help i will be okay and mama is always there yeah. whenever i want she's always around so i'm not afraid of that and update on this eyeshadow it did not crease dude it's stunning okay let's see what lip color should i go for i have so many i want to do like a dark lip so i was thinking like honor by k by katrina let's see how dark this is it's like a berry color Okay, I think that's enough. I've answered like a lot of questions. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Okay, we're going to end with that question. Thank you so much. So interesting. Look, again, I would have given you this answer beautifully one year ago. Okay, and now I feel like since there's such a massive shift in just generally where I am in life, I am actually taking it by the day. I don't know when this birth is going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to feel. What is the next step in my life? Okay, all I know is I want to give birth, I want to do my best, I want to heal, I want to take the baby, go travel for a bit and live my life a little uh, and just bring back some happiness into my life. That's the first few months that I'm giving myself grace to do. Five years is a long time, man. So much can change in one year. Look at my life. It's so different. It's so different. I would have never imagined that this is where I'd be today, you know, despite everything. So I feel like planning everything and then like it being absolutely like, because I'm really anal about life. I wanted like this timeline. I wanted this to happen, that to happen. And I put myself on, under so much pressure to make things happen in a certain timeline that I just disappointed my own self. Okay. And it just to have a sudden drop and shift in your plans was very unnatural to me. And I'm, in, I'm a very, I'm like a control freak. I want everything to be a certain way. But you cannot control life, dude. Like, life is going to happen to you. It's going to put you on a path you're supposed to be on. And you're just supposed to maneuver and adjust like water. I'm not saying I'm there. I'm not even half of what water is. I'm a very solid baraf right now who's very rigid in her ways. But honestly, I'm melting. It's a very good metaphor, but I'm melting away those rigidness and like those thoughts that I had in mind where everything has to be a certain way. And I'm just going to live my life. So. The things I really hope for in the next five years is my kid being absolutely happy. Kid being like in a great environment where it can grow and enrich itself and me being very healed and happy. Hopefully in a relationship by then and in a happy relationship, in love, going towards the path that uh, is set out for me and just taking that journey. You know, I'm probably doing still excellent in my career with you guys and sticking around. You know, that's what I see myself doing in the next five years and building my company and just um, doing the things I meant to do from 30 to 35. Just like primal early 30 years. I plan on being like super, super fit and super in shape and a very like healthy, active mother. And yeah, these are things I can tell you off the chart because these are things I need to happen and it will. 
rest i'm leaving it up to the lord wherever it takes me whoever comes into my life where whether it's friends people family i'm just going to keep an open heart and just allow it all to come and go and i think that's the kind of intention you need to have and that's what this whole year has taught me that hey people come and go and you cannot like control the outcome of your life you cannot control how people react and my focus now is just me and baby and my career like these two things are at the top priority of my life right now and i hope that i'm able to achieve everything and more in the next 5 years with you guys and that you're seeing everything <laughs> All right guys thank you so much for watching this Q&A. I love you so much. Thank you for such amazing questions and I have never felt actually better. Um it's been a while. It's been a week of a lot of poking and prodding and I felt really icky. So it's been an, it's been nice to sit down and film and I love this makeup look. Can I just tell you like every thing in this makeup from the Dior foundation to these blushes to this lip color and this pack primer oil We've got it nailed down. I think the skin looks fantastic. So good. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. I love you so much and I will see you in my next video. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. Are we going to meet again? <laughs> Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Okay, bye. Until labor. <laughs>